In this lecture, we learn about the relationships between cultural history, civilizations, and climate change. And we will see how we can identify the changes from natural archives. Old civilization occurred during the full Holocene, eh, the period of the last 10,000 years. But during that period, also climate and sea level changed, and that had a lot of impact on early civilizations. In big history, we try to place human history in a broader context, and we like to explore how climate and sea level change has influenced cultural history. And here we take the Maya civilization as an example. And we like to know how climate conditions in the past, in southern Mexico, has influenced the culture of the Mayas. The question now is, how can we gain knowledge of climate conditions of thousands of years ago? Well, we use proxies. And a proxy is information about what we like to know of the past but what was never measured. So here we use the changing vegetation as an indicator of climate change. So in this case, vegetation change is our proxy, and it has information on climate. Vegetation change can be mo monitored by pollen grains produced by the flowers of the plants. And here in this book, you see illustrations of many different pollen grains. These are photographs taken under the microscope. What is our archive? Well, that can be a, a, a peat bog. Here you see a, a profile of about two and a half meter high, and the oldest peat is at the bottom, and the youngest peat is at the top. And if you take a sample through the peat core, then you have a sample from old at the bottom to young at the top. And you can take samples every five centimeter, for example, and uh, try to extract information from that. Another option is that you, uh, that you drill a core. And here you see a core of sediments of one meter length, and every centimeter we took a sample and the total length here reflects 6,000 years. So every centimeter makes a jump of 60 years. Well, here you see a sample of about one cubic centimeter of sediment, and this sample is prepared in the laboratory. And that means that we have here in this glass tube a concentrate of pollen grains. All the rest has disappeared, and only the pollen grains are here in this tube. And from the pollen grains, we make a microscope slide. This is a microscope slide, and this is analyzed under the microscope. Well, then we have uh, the, the pollen manuals to identify the pollen grains, and then finally we can uh, calculate and draw a pollen diagram. Here we see a pollen diagram from Northwest Europe, and along the vertical is the thyme, and on the horizontal are the different herb speeches and tree speeches. And on top you see how the pollen grains look like of all those different plants. The pollen di diagram shows the last 12,000 years, and at the bottom you see the last part of the Ice Age. And the vegetation is dominated by herbs and pioneer trees like uh, pine and, and, and birch. And then we cross the blue line and then we arrive in the Holocene, uh, the, the period of the last 10,000 years. And then you see an increasing number of species immigrating into Northwest Europe. So the forest starts to be more diverse and more complex. And at the top, uh, you see the most recent part, and there you see, for example, that beech is a tree that only arrived about 2,800 years ago. Now we make a step from a pollen diagram to a landscape. 
In the middle you see the vertical bar, and that is a bar of 100% white, and you see the changing proportions of the different trees. So again, at the bottom we are in the late glacial, and you see an open landscape dominated by herbs. And then when we enter the Holocene, you see the trees immigrating, and you see that the landscape starts to be more and more complex. Well, in the middle of the figure, and then we are around uh, 5,000 years ago, most species had arrived, and we talk about the climax forest. And in the top two figures, you see that people had a significant impact on the landscape by clearing the forest and by, uh, by making agriculture. So you see in this diagram how the, the, the climate has changed uh, the, the vegetation, the forest composition, while at the same time man entered and started to change the landscape because of their agriculture and all the space they needed for their villages and their roads. Well, now we make the step to uh, the Mayas, and we go to Yucatan uh, in southern Mexico, and uh, Yucatan is, geologically speaking, a remarkable part of the world because it is uh, uh, built up of limestone, of calcium carbonate. Well, the Mayas lived there for some 2,000 years, and they built huge cities. And you see many uh, different buildings here, uh, and th that must have been large cities, and uh, most cities probably uh, had uh, 30 to 40,000 inhabitants. So that means that agriculture, uh, the production of food, is very important to let these uh, cities survive. But the limestone has a problem, because all the rain that comes in immediately disappears in the soil. So you see no rivers in the landscape. The rivers are subterraneously. So you have to, to go down in the holes, eh, so where the rock has been dissolved by rainwater, and you can walk down t t 10, 20 meters, and there you see the rivers, so in the, in the soil. The problem of a limestone is that at the surface it is always dry, so the vegetation is in a dryness stress, and also the people. The people have to go down to the subterraneous rivers to collect their water. So these areas of the world are very prone to climatic droughts. And if you look at the, the forest composition in this, in this uh, photograph, then you see a mix, mixed forest. You see trees that keep their leaves, and uh, that are green, and you see leaves that have shed their leaves. So you see trees resistant to drought, and you see trees that are not resistant to drought. It is a mix here, and that's, that is evidence that the climate uh, is seasonal, uh, with, with humid and very dry intervals during the year. This is a pollen diagram from Lake Koba in uh, Yucatan. And you see the lake itself, and you see the pollen record of the last about 5,000 years. So you read the pollen diagram always from the bottom to the top, and at the bottom of the record you see the, the forest composition, uh, the, the black parts of the, of the record, and it are sp uh, certain families that make up the forest. And then you see a moment that the forest is decreasing rapidly, and the herbs are increasing also rapidly. So people come in, they start to clear the forest, and they build their villages, and they use all the surface for their agricultural production. What did they produce? Well, look at the records. You see the record of Zea mice, eh? so they produced mice, and you see a record next to it called Genopodiaceae, and that is quinoa. Mice and quinoa were the most important staple foods of the Mayas. So you see a period of almost 2,000 years of a lot of agricultural production, and then you see that the production decreased, 
and you see that the open space in the Maya lowlands became covered again by forest. What happened at the end of the Maya culture? Eh? If we date this record with radiocarbon dates, then we see that the change is dated about 900 Anno Domini. Well, what happened 900 Anno Domini? Probably this is the cause of severe droughts. So the vegetation uh, gives a, a good suggestion that climatic drought is the reason of the end of the Maya civilization. Now we go to a deep sea core, and this record is a titanium record, comes from the Cariaco Trench located offshore Venezuela, also in the Caribbean uh, basin. And titanium is a terrestrial element and is transported to the ocean under dry, uh, con under, under dry conditions. Here you see a record of the last uh, 2000 years uh, and you see that uh, several uh, changes in the titanium record show that climate conditions uh, are quite unstable. Well, the, the, the yellow part is zoomed in and then we go to the middle part of this figure and then you see a period of about uh, 200 years, 150 years long and you see that this period is the end of a longer period of increasing dryness. And if we zoom in this period, then we go to the top part of this record, and then we see uh, about 200 years of history. And this is really a fascinating part of the record. Look at the, the colored uh, bands in this figure, and then you see the dry periods. The first dry period uh, has a duration of about three to four years, and then uh, every time with 40 year steps, you see a dry period of nine years, a dry period of three years, and 47 years later, you see a dry period of six years. Well, you can imagine that people that live in an area where drought is really important, if you have every few decades a period of many years of climatic drought, that the agricultural production will crash and that the population has a shortage of food. So we think that we see here uh, good arguments that climatic drought was the reason around uh, 900 Anno Domini that the Maya civilization was unable to continue with sufficient food production and finally crashed. Well, the conclusion of this story is that uh, sediments and peat are a perfect archive to learn the climate and environmental conditions of the past. And we also see that climate conditions had uh, a significant impact on the cultural history 